Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. And I'm Kim Anderson, I'm a board member of MCAT, and I'm also the Director of Programs and Grants for Humanities Montana. And we're going to invite you to this Spring Hope Edition. So, of oh, well, High. you are uh, an optimist. <laughs> well, why not? It seemed a little uh, violent out. It is Monday afternoon uh, on March 5th. Um, I was wearing sunglasses for a moment, running errands, taking you, them off. You Put caught them that brief little window there. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> um, but we're hoping for spring, right? In two weeks' time, when we'll be back here doing the show, it'll be but two days away from the first yeah. day of spring. So. I'm not hoping for spring. I'm just leaving town and going south. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about Humanities Montana? Is there something going one, on? Uh, one brief thing, well two things, um, but on April 20th we have a grant deadline. Humanities Montana gives about $150,000 every year to nonprofit organizations who do work in the humanities. History, literature, philosophy, political science, um, there's our website. And uh, we have a grant deadline, as I said, coming up on April April 20th. So if you are involved in a project in the year going forward that uh, could use some financial support, you might go to our website, read our guidelines, give me a call. I'm always available to counsel people about grants. Um, and I hope you'll consider it. These are for public humanities programs. Excellent. And I would remind people too that um, you just, you have a an enormously uh, welcome program on news, fake news, yes. and all that stuff, and that um, it's still going on, isn't it? It, it will be the going on throughout program. 2018 and probably Great. even into 2019. Uh, when Scott showed the website just a moment ago, you saw that Informed Citizen. And right, that's what it reminded me of. It's it. called the Informed Citizen Initiative, and we have available a catalog of about a dozen different programs. Uh, that can be brought into school classrooms or libraries or museums or any community organization. They're absolutely free. And they talk about the importance of media in a democracy and specifically in our democracy. Um, changing the evolution of news media organizations, yeah. um, the phenomenon of fake news, um, different programs that look at at environmental reporting, investigative reporting, um, there's there's a lot of different. That's options. great, yeah. and and also that uh, you have the speakers bureau where people from anywhere in the state, right, can book someone to come yes. in, give a presentation, and I I think it was you or someone that said one major function of Humanities Montana is to generate informed discussion. Yes, so about absolutely. talk, so people talk right. about these issues. Yeah, that's right. Come to their own conclusions. Our motto is learn, reflect, together. Nice. <laughs> well, on that note, I would share uh, the leading news of MCAT, at least to me, right? Because I'm responsible for getting people together for focus groups. And uh, yes. the purpose of the focus groups is to find out the needs of the community over the next 10 years in terms of local communication. Segway. So in order to do this, we're asking people uh, if they have about two hours to spare, to spare it for MCAT on Tuesday, April the 3rd, on Wednesday, April the 4th, at the uh, Missoula Public Library in the large meeting room. If you go to MCAT.org, you'll see mm -hmm. at the top banner, just two over to the left, focus groups. It will explain what the focus groups are going to do while we're having it at this time, and then there's a link. Click here to register. So I just want to encourage people um, to do that. We'd love to hear from you. and. Uh, the time is coming up April 3rd and the 4th. And other news, um, MCAT counselors are offering a spring break film class. The class is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and that's also advertised on the website. So we're looking for uh, kids about age 9 to 13 that would like to spend some of that winter break, uh, spring break time um, learning stop animation, learning uh, script writing, using our green screen, our virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're interested, you can go to MCAT.org and then there's a spot to click to register for that uh, spring camp. And then uh, the last piece of business, every Saturday, animation drop-in. It's clamoring along. 
They usually get like between eight and a dozen kids Very each Saturday. Popular. Yeah, it's pretty popular. Um, it's $10 fee for 1 to 5 p.m. and that's every Saturday up until the Saturday a week before the Memorial Day weekend. Oh, right. That must be May teen something. So that's enough. I'm exhausted. <laughs> We're I've said doing it all. too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our first guest is here. Yes, being very patient. Yeah, Megan Pfaff, welcome. Hi, thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you for having me. You know it. So this is the 11th year of your event? Yes, the 11th year of the Missoula Women's Fair um, at the UC Ballroom. So we're really excited. It's it's uh, grown a lot. In the last and it's coming years. up this Saturday. This Saturday, yeah. yeah. So uh, March 10th? 10th. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Explain to us what the Missoula Women's Fair is, what so its purposes. We are celebrating International Women's Day, which is on the 8th. Um, and so the Women's Fair is an event there to empower women and um, educate them, but they can also shop and pamper themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have tarot card reading and a chair massage entertainment all day so we have people like summit cheerleading and um kanga training so there's going to be a bunch of moms wearing their babies doing uh, some dance moves on interesting the stage. <laughs> yes and then we spotlight two nonprofits that are in the community every year it's different nonprofits, and we raise money for them we donate a booth to them and we allow them to speak on the stage throughout the event as well so a little bit of a you know community twist to it that's that's an interesting oh, wrinkle to the whole thing, mm -hmm. and but the purpose is just to spotlight um, businesses and services that right. are primarily women focused. Right, exactly. So we have um, everything from like Mary Kay to uh, Providence um, to dentists and chiropractors and uh, fitness clubs. So everything that involves you know your life as a woman mm -hmm. from young to you know having babies and wearing babies to um, <laughs> Missoula Aging Services is there. Um, we have Montana Wild Fish and Game. Wildlife is there with specific programs that are for women in their department. Oh, right. So yeah, a lot of really cool information and the event is free to attend. So no reason not to come, spend a little bit of time. And at the end of the day, if you're still there at 3.30, we're giving away $100 cash. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So, Just boom. And boom, there's a right. website. I was so enthralled right. with what you were saying. I didn't notice on the, the preview monitor yeah. whether people saw that at home. Yeah. So, um, the website will give the specifics right. of. MissoulaWomensFair.com. Um, right. It gives you all of the vendors there that day. Um, also, there's a thing that says 2008 nonprofits. So, it'll tell you all about our two nonprofits that are one is there. a living art right the they've often been on this show mm -hmm. yeah they're and wonderful yeah. they're just down the street you know oh, on okay. tool yeah, and, and I paid the them a visit like I've been doing a new show visiting oh. on profits and whatnot so we went over to um, their art uh, workshops that yeah. they have um, over on Tool or Spruce, depending on how you look at it. Oh, there's okay. a little warehouse there. Yeah. And then there's another the nonprofit. Silver Lining Foundation, and yeah. they're brand new. Um, they just started I hadn't in like heard 2015. Of that. So what I think is really cool is every year we pick like six or seven nonprofits that help women or children in the community, but then people can also nominate nonprofits. Oh. So these two nonprofits were nominated, and then people vote on the nonprofit they want to see. These two blew everyone oh, wow. out of the water. No one had a chance <laughs> of becoming a nonprofit this year because they had so many people well, that's voting impressive. for them. Yeah. Do you know what the mission of Silver Lining is? So the Silver Lining Foundation helps um, women who are battling cancer, and they do dragon boat racing. Wow. Which is oh, whoa. super cool. In the Clark yeah. Fork? Or? I'm not 100% sure <laughs> okay. where they do it. I um, know they Come do. to the event. Yeah, we should go and find talk out. talk to right. them. Yeah. I know they do some like uh, on Flathead I'm going to make a yeah. dragon boat race. We need to have them on the show. Yeah, right. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And their mission is fantastic. They want to empower women while they're going through this change in life. Mm -hmm. And um, really show them that there's a group of people that 
are just like them, but that they're strong and they can get through it. And um, they really help with the whole, you know, mind, body, spirit aspect of these women. Oh, that's great. Because yeah. Living Art is a, is a, a good complement to that. They yeah. Because they do work, you know, with people facing serious illness. Right. And they don't want to really call it art therapy, but art expression is available right. and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. I just think it's wonderful because uh, I get to learn a lot about the nonprofits in this town I as bet. well yeah. uh, with the nominations and both of those two nonprofits I had never heard of before so I'm excited to learn more about them as well and see them on stage at the event and talk to them because I haven't I haven't had a chance to talk to them in person yet yeah it's the event it, it Ends at three thirty in the afternoon. It ends at four. Sat okay. But we are, are giving away our hundred dollar cash prize right. at three thirty, and then we also have six amazing baskets that we uh. raffle off at the end of the event, and a hundred percent of the proceeds go to those two nonprofits. Nice. And Great. All six of our baskets are worth over a thousand dollars, and it was all donated from vendors in the event and uh, community businesses so wow that's terrific now how many vendors will you have this year we have over 60 vendors uh, 10 of them are handmade items um, and then like I said we have tarot card readers we actually have somebody that you can learn how to paint so she'll have canvas there and you can paint and um, chair massage and uh, face painter so there's interactive you, things going oh, on as well. Oh, it sounds fun. Yeah, and then the the kids, the kid performers are my favorite. They are <laughs> so cute. So um, on the website also has uh, our list of entertainment. We have entertainment starting right at 11.15 and going until uh, 3.30 when we do the raffle prizes and the $100. Is that the very start of the event or does it start early? It starts at 11. Okay. Um, we give people 15 minutes to, you know, make their way in. Right. right. <laughs> right. And then we start with the, the entertainment and it's all in the same room, which is cool. So you can watch the entertainment while you're like visiting the vendors sure. and yeah. And I think we owe it as Always when there's an event at university on the weekend, I like to assure the, the viewership yes. that there's plenty of free parking. Plenty I mean, of free generally, parking. Yeah, in absolutely. that UC parking lot to the north. Yeah. And a little bit, you know, in the Mansfield. And also the library. Yeah, yeah the that library parking, parking, parking structure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so then you just take the people who don't seem to know where the ballroom is, third floor. Yeah, the UC. and take that, that there's an elevator, elevator in the yeah. middle, sort of, yeah. or it seems to be a little on the north side, but maybe right. it's right in the middle. I don't know. Right, but, but the stairs glass, are outside. Cool. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, there's stairs inside, outside. I mean, you can. Yeah, get that's there true. Every which way, <laughs> and we have posters throughout the UC, and we have the most amazing volunteers. So there's only three of us in my office that put on this event, and there's a lot more than three moving parts oh I am sure. that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we have uh, the community has also stepped up and we have had a ton of volunteers to help us hand out bags and l help vendors load in and do the raffle table which it's just amazing to me to see the community come together for an event like this we okay. should have been there for our summer camps Oh right! Next year. I have year. to put it in mind for next year. Yeah, because Very good idea. and on the uh, some of the literature about the the fair, um, and this was I suppose directed towards vendors. It said women make eighty five percent of the decision household yes. decisions. Yes, right. And they it's do. not that the first time I've heard it. Like in terms of like childcare. Um, you know, different advertisers have said to me, well, all the studies show that it's usually up to the moms to decide what the kids are going to do for the summer. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I have a husband. I have two children. My husband's like, hey, can I, you know, can, can I do this today? <laughs> do we have plans? Right. Like, what are we doing? Because you're in the 85 percentile <laughs> of decisions. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Yes. No, Very no, good. I make, yeah, I, I mean, we make it as a family, but I'm the one that finds the information. And keeps the and calendar in your head. Keeps yes. the calendar <laughs> and brings everything home and says, okay, I think the kids should do this, this, and this. Right. So, yeah, women do make a lot of those decisions. So next year, an opportunity. Yeah, for next time. year, MCAT will be there with summer okay. camp offer. Okay. Woo, see? Then they can all come visit right. you guys next year. <laughs> nice. So Saturday, March mm -hmm. 10th. Yes. Beginning at 11, Beginning. ending at 4. Yes. UC Ballroom, third floor, University of Montana campus. Plenty of free parking on the weekend. Free parking, and it's a free, free event. Admission. 
Yeah. Right. With, so, with, lots with of giveaways. Like that. Yeah. Tons of giveaways. And I think almost all of the vendors are doing Enter to Wins. And yeah. then we have our awesome raffle prizes. So, um, and 100% of the proceeds from that raffle goes to those two nonprofits. Excellent. The weather's going to be terrible. It'll be a fun what? day to go to the <laughs> I heard it's going to be terrible. It's like 60% chance of rain that day. Oh, yeah, so but it's warming. To the People, it's warming trends. Yeah. Spring is. <laughs> Did we just say it's spring is coming? It's warm enough to go outside. Right here. <laughs> It's warm enough to drive to the That's UC. Right. But you don't want to spend too much time outside. Right. You want to go straight to the UC. All right. All right. Megan, thanks so much for taking Thank time to talk to us about me. it. You're most welcome. And now Scott is going to show you a little something. We're going to trade out visitors, and we'll be right back with news from Jeanette Rankin Peace Resource Center after this. over there. What a nice day to be out and about today, but I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second, let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out, come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you got to do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> Ranchers are the stewards of Montana's great grasslands and wetlands. Ducks Unlimited works with ranchers on conservation programs to improve cattle production and wildlife habitat. He has to finish with the, oh, we're back. No, no, he doesn't have to finish anything. What those anything. ducks were doing. <laughs> <laughs> we are back, and I lied to you in the lineup. Emmy Scherer is here. She is representing a historic preservation office, the city of Missoula. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. You know it. So springtime often brings this event which is the, um, the recognition of people in town that have done work um, to preserve um, the historic presence of buildings, houses, businesses, and so on, right? Yes. So it's coming up again. It's coming up again. And um, people that watching even are invited to nominate different um, people and projects they think deserve historic preservation recognition. Yes, please. Can you tell us a little bit about the categories that are involved in the process? Of and the prizes. Just, uh, yeah. We're right. just used to that from before. <laughs> um, my loyalty and honor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the different uh, categories this year, they do kind of change, but this year we have commercial restoration, residential restoration, adaptive reuse, compatible new construction. Uh, cultural features and or landscapes, which is kind of a catch-all, so it doesn't mm. have to be a building. Mm. could be a trail or a oh, sculpture or something like that. The Dorothy Ogg Award, which is just outstanding um, preservation professional, so someone mm -hmm. who's devoted their life to it. And the Centennial Award, which can go to a group as well, so an architecture firm or, or sure. something like that. Yeah, and... Um, Nominations are due March 21st, so we have kind of a quick window this year, but I know you can do it, Missoula. Right. <laughs> There's been a lot of changes. We've all been thinking about it. Um, and also, I just urge everyone to think outside the box a little bit. 
there's a lot of historic preservation around us that we don't even think about, um, whether it's, you know, a reuse of an old warehouse to a gym or a brewery mm-hmm. or something like that. The, the world is our oyster when thinking about, you know, preserving and, and progressing our special, unique place in Missoula. Well, and I'm certainly downtown Missoula, especially this year. Right now, it's just shocking, almost, the amount of change and building that's going on. So I think, for me anyway, that always makes me more aware of, I mean, I love seeing the, the renovations and the reuse repurposing that's going on with a lot of buildings downtown um, and there's been some some losses too that that we're all sad about but um, but it but but vibrancy and change are part of a healthy culture and so it's cool to see what's going on with some of the other older buildings yeah downtown. absolutely and uh, with the awards we have the actual ceremony on May 3rd which is public and it's catered and it'll be fun it's a party that does sound fun where is it where is it held we haven't yet reserved a place <laughs> last last year no we worries did the roxy. yeah roxy theater last year and we oh, did some video fun. you know interviewing yeah. some of the winners and we've always meant to follow through which i don't think we have you know where we'd go to the places that they fixed oh, yeah. up that and then, would be a good show yeah i should do it yeah. for my out and about uh-huh that would be i perfect. need new places yeah. to go that'd be great that'd be great Um, And so May is National Historic Preservation Month, so we'll be having tours and different events around town throughout the month, too. So it's good to keep up with that. One of them we know is going to be the Unseen Missoula Tour, which is in September. So seeing those parts that we don't usually get to interact with. Yeah, one one I recorded the last time was uh, Philip Mackling. Mm -hmm. He was Historic Preservation Officer before, before. Uh, yeah. on him the job and um, he was given a presentation of the parking garage of the Florence Hotel uh, and it was pretty interesting stuff I never knew was yeah. there like there was there's a big metal turntable like in Batman's cape wow. to turn the <laughs> automobiles around right, right. and there's actually like a lift elevator uh-huh. where the automobiles could go to the, the sub basement oh my gosh I know it's pretty trippy and um, he was also talking about you know, how that corner was powerful back in the day, that this was, you know, the Florence Hotel building, the Mercantile. It was like the location for capital. I think a bank was there Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was like a free speech event taking place, right, that that they do by the clock, the tower, the the watch tower. No, wait a minute, that's something else. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But every, you know, one year we recorded someone reenacting their free speech because there was attempts to unionize and they took the fight to the most powerful corner of Missoula, he was explaining. So it seems like, you know, there's always these stories. It's not just a matter of buildings, but the people attached to them, maybe, Mm -hmm. at the time that really brings some stuff to light. And I was saying before we started the segment, the house that I thought should be nominated and was and won um, has turned into a hostel. So for years it had like a photographic um, restoration business in it. And um, it was just one narrow house and it looked old fashioned, right? Mm -hmm. And then the people who bought it added a whole wing to make a hostel, but they matched the shingle and the architecture Mm -hmm. to the old. Yeah. And so that was clever. Yeah. They made so here that's kind of an example where there's a house really close to downtown, mm-hmm. kind of commercial, mm-hmm. but they expanded it, honoring its history, using mm-hmm. the same architecture, mm-hmm. and now it's a, a hostelry. Right. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about Missoula Historic Preservation and what the organization does and how it runs? Sure. So um, we're the Missoula Historic Preservation Commission and we're a city commission of nine members. And so what we do is oversee all the alterations Mm -hmm. and or demolition of uh, properties in Missoula that are individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So we have 62 buildings in Missoula that we go through a permitting program and it's all through the the city. So it's a city quasi-judicial commission and uh, work with property owners and architects on sensitive um, design and alterations and you know what would 
behoove the building and, and we also do a lot of outreach and education about historic preservation. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be on the National mm-hmm. Register, and so just clearing up some of that. And yeah, it's a it's a great program. So, absolutely, yeah. because I see a lot of the signs in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I'm over by the university, and I always wonder. Oh, I, w- I wonder how laborious that that whole process is. Yeah. So that's. If you see a National Register sign, that would be through the commission. And we work with the state, the State Historic mm-hmm. Preservation Office, for all the signage. And um, it's, it's, it's not too laborious. It's, it's fun. And it just <laughs> means researching old buildings and old pictures. Yeah, and finding out uh, the history of your home or the building that, you know, you work in is, that's mm-hmm. fascinating stuff. Yeah, and the neighborhood, too. Right, you know, yeah. I live in the historic South Side neighborhood, <laughs> not just the South Side, yes. but the historic, you know. Yeah. And I love seeing those old pictures, like when the Higgins Bridge first opened. Oh, yeah. And what we call the hip strip, you know, like 3rd, 4th, and 5th, those are enclave mm-hmm. of businesses. And some of it, you know, I feel like, oh, I remember. I remember before the Missoulian building was built that there was like a car dealership right. or something That's over right. there. Mm-hmm. And the H.O. Bell building. Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that oh, one. Yeah, when it yeah. came down and became the gas station convenience right. store. Yeah. So yeah. it's really funny how quickly we forget, too. Yeah. And that's why there seems to be a little look back, really tickles people. And in the Old West, history is sort of at a premium, right? I mean, yeah, it's only, right. We only got 150, less than 150 years of European history here. We wiped out all the other history. So, yeah, people really hang on to the history mm-hmm. that they have. Yeah. It's not like some European deal. Um, I know I've told this story before. Of, yeah. I was getting my hair cut in Amsterdam, and on the, there was a picture on the wall, right? that showed like uh, several people each cutting their their own ha- the other's hair like an old man was cutting an old a very old man was cutting an old man's hair who was cutting a middle-aged man's hair who was cutting a young man's hair mm-hmm. and i said gosh did you guys do a promotion you know for the the barbershop and he said no that's a family picture that's my great great grandfather <laughs> that's my grandfather there's my father and the guy in the seat was me and the kid was, the the wow. man was 12 years old wow. i said how long has this barbershop been here he said since 1734 <laughs> we don't get much of that around here right but um I think that's why people have a fascination with historic yeah. preservation. Absolutely. I mean, one thing I always say is that historic preservation is inherently local. Mm-hmm. You know, it's our community history, and that's why people care because it affects us here in Missoula. Yeah, and that's what's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, again, what is the process if someone has an idea about a building? Yeah. Um, uh, or a structure or a trail or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, and they want to nominate, what's the process they go through? So they would go online. Uh, they can go to the City of Missoula Historic Preservation page and nominate, or we have just a direct um, link that you nominate. So it's all online. You do have to create a free account. Mm-hmm. And that's just so we have your contact information and you do have to turn in just a little bit of background on the building, why you think it deserves this, and some pictures, and if you have any um, architectural renderings or anything like that, you can upload that. Right. And we'll review and let the winners know probably around mid, mid-April. mid Yeah, so they go to the party. Oh, do you want to show people at home? Poster? Yeah, the poster. Yeah, I really cool like that. Poster. Yeah. I don't know. If the, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very People kind of yeah. get the idea. <laughs> New waves and old ways. Yes, yeah. that's our theme. And what year. is the image? Do you know so what that, that type image? Is? I don't know, but I found it. It's somewhere in Missoula. <laughs> it is in Missoula. It's in Missoula. Okay, good. Um, I thought it kind of, you know, represented more than just what we usually think of. Exactly. Of the, classic brick commercial building right. of you can go so much right it's not the Hammond arcade it's right. you know no. rougher yes. a little rougher it's rougher yes. yes but it's local and it's one of our it's places, so metal so. clad and i don't know if that was like the 80s or 90s you know the place where uh, you know just on alder or is it um, tool you know the one that has the old fashioned cobblestone features that hotel that's called like the antique mall 
Yeah. Uh, when I first moved here in 83, I took a picture of the side of it because it was clad in that corrugated like oh, aluminum. Really? And I took like a sunset picture because there was so much light and stuff. Right. But they've since taken it off. But at one time, that know. was I the cat's meow. That. Corrugated yeah. aluminum <laughs> yeah. nailed onto like a clabbered wood mm -hmm. structure uh -huh. along with the, the very aluminum metal roof. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the people love that stuff. Or, you know, the building, and I, we should move on, but um, the building that's um, next to the import mart that also oh, had yeah. tremendous amount of metal. And then another building on um, um, Front Street, you know, next to the Stockman's. And that has, has been renovated in right. a beautiful yeah, way. That's beautiful. Showing that, like, 1883 type pride with the yes. little wood yes. um, turret on the top. Not turret, you know, it's like a spoke. But that was clad in the same sort of metal stuff that I think wow. Stockman's is. Mm -hmm clad yeah. in now mm -hmm. and it was like a 50s deal that along with um, like what we have the fake brick you know where <laughs> people would nail plastic brick to the side uh -huh. of their house to give uh -huh. it more <laughs> it was just fascinating yeah. well thank you thank you for both. coming over yeah this is and, gonna be uh, fun i can't wait to see what gets yeah. nominated and, won't and, we'll, and we'll do a follow-through i promise um you know with the winners and yeah, see, to do a show events. about what yeah. they really and then we'll know with. where the celebration will be. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's we will. true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we will know that soon. Yeah. Um, Scott, I don't know if you can show people at home that focus group clip. Oh, but that's yeah. what's on my mind. No, you cannot? You cannot. It's totally impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> so I'm going to remind people at this point, just because it's much on my mind. I have I to get 80 of you people in a room to talk about long-range plans for communication in Missoula, April 3rd and 4th at the large meeting room in the library. Therefore, if you go to MCAT.org and click on the tab that says Focus Groups, you'll see there an opportunity to register for this grand event. I registered. You are very, very good. <laughs> um, we'll be right back. I, I think really we're going to bring out the people from Jeanette Rankin Peace Resource Center in their quest to find the peacemaker of the year whose age may surprise everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right after whatever this is. We'll be back. Missoula Community Access Television works with kids in an active learning environment where they get hands-on experience in video production. MCAT offers weekly Saturday classes that spark creativity in kids from 9 to 13 years of age. Located downtown at 500 North Higgins. MCAT Saturday Drop-Ins. Create your story. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps? No. <laughs> Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. 
to get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or Adult Protective Services at 1-844-277-9300. Release thing. And well, we, we are back. And um, while you were seeing some Missoula Aging Services uh, clips, it reminded me to remind you, dear viewer, that March is Meals on Wheels Month. So this is a month that if you want to uh, help Missoula Aging Services, um, you can do so either through donations, and I know that the program, right, has seen a lot of federal cuts. Right. So we were, we were thinking someone would come from the aging services, so I'd just like to take a minute to say in their absence, um, uh, march uh, for meals that you can help by becoming a driver or a financial donation or a letter writing mm -hmm. campaign to preserve the program. So in any event, after much ado about something we have Nancy and Soma. Welcome and thank you for letting the other people go on, even though you came so early. <laughs> so the, the primary um, news item we want to talk about is the, um, the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center hosting the annual Search for Peace. Yes. So do you want to supply some detail? Sure. So this is our very first youth Peacemaker of the Year Award. We have in the past done a search for peace in which we've had youth engaged in making artworks mm -hmm. to express what peace is. And this year we decided to try, try something different. So we're going to be awarding a Youth Peacemaker Award for the very first time. Excellent. And we're here to let people know that. Mm -hmm. um, the p search for peace for young people started in 2001 when uh, Father Jim Hogan uh, challenged the community to think about how can we foster a sense of peace among young people. Mm. And so he created the art program award at that time and we did that all those years through last year and then decided this year let's just try something different. So, so that's what this is and we've been doing a search for peace beginning in 2001 every year. So. Um, this year we're going to be shifting to having it be a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. And Soma can tell a little bit more about what the requirements are to be nominated as a youth peace peacemaker. Okay. Right, so in the selection process we kind of have the following criteria. We look for individuals who are 5 through 18 um, years of age and we look uh, for either groups or individuals. Anyone can be nominated in that regard. Um, and we also we look for a commitment to peace and justice in the Missoula community itself. And we also look for someone um, who sort of walks the walk and talks the talk of, of sustainability and peace and um, nonviolence and social justice in, in general. Wow, so somebody watching out there, yeah. they have a unique opportunity mm -hmm. to um, honor someone in their lives that is a lot younger than you would have thought for this award, mm -hmm. right? right? I mean, there have been people I remember um, you know, in the past of people that have been in the community a really long time right. and say, by gum, this person needs to be recognized, you know, for all of the diplomacy and all of the sacrifice they've done for the greater good on various causes, you know. And so here's, and, and I said in the other room, a five-year-old peacemaker? <laughs> and I've, I bet there are a lot of parents out there that are also scratching their head at that notion. You know, there are some small people who come into this world old and wise, and Very they true. just are amazing young people from earliest ages on. So we wanted to be able to say, hey, we, we embrace anyone who, from that age range, who is doing something amazing that's expressing peace. Oh, that's I great. Say, I should say also that the award of this award, the, the, the deadline for mm. applications is right. the 30th of March. Okay. And applications are on the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center website, mm -hmm. which is easy to find. It's jrpc.org. And, and Soma can tell you what the questions are in just a minute. But I just wanted to finish off this thought. We are also still awarding the adult peacemaker oh, of the year. Okay. Oh, okay. So whoever wins this award, we're going to have a joint celebration to honor the both of them oh, sweet. in May when we do our, our Adult Peacemaker of the Year Award celebration. We will be honoring the youth as well. Oh, that's really good. Right. Yeah. And that's so timely. You know, after the, the latest high school shooting tragedy, what we've seen in the press anyway, um, is a sense that young people are going to take 
um, charge of this right. issue, and then they're really galvanized um, towards trying to reduce violence in schools in general, and of course, the, the super tragic shooting in particular. Yeah. yeah. So it's timely that you guys are recognizing youth for peace, yes, you know? Yes, yes, although we had this in place prior to that happening, yeah, right. even still. Yeah. Right. And I, I just think it's important to acknowledge that it, it's not only at the end of your life that you are recognized, or, or yeah, long right. into your years that you are recognized <laughs> for making important contributions. Mm -hmm. That people of all ages make important contributions. Soma, how did you get involved with the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center? Um, well, I think I've always been sort of involved. I, I've lived in Missoula my whole life. I'm a junior now, and, and all throughout childhood, I went to the Fair Trade store, uh -huh. and that was always a great place to get presents. My father bought musical instruments there, and so it was always kind of, it had this nice ambiance and this nice um, atmosphere that I always enjoyed. And at the same time, I was interested in, in kind of um, looking at, at peace and nonviolence and justice in my own community and trying to make a change um, in that direction. And, and I thought that the best way to do that is, is to join, um, become a volunteer in something, um, organization like the Peace Center. Nice. That's kind of how I got started, yeah. And he touched on that thing I said we should talk about, and that is the right. fair trade store that's in the front. It's um, a lot of people's introduction to the Peace Center, I think. Yeah, yeah. especially at the Christmas time, right? right. <laughs> and we're like, ah, oh, I'm going here. Yes, yes. Well, you know, we have, again, a fair trade store in Missoula. Almost everything that we have in the store is fair trade, and the few things that aren't fair trade are pretty much locally made. Mm -hmm. um, again, the difference between fair trade and free trade. Free trade is where the people who are engaged in that whole area of commerce are trying to push the bottom line as low as possible. Right. And as a result, a lot of the people who work to make the goods that end up being delivered under free trade are very inexpensive, but the people who make them can hardly support their families no. in cases they can't support their families. And their working conditions aren't all that good either. I'm reminded of about four or five years ago, that four-story building in Bangladesh that was the garment factory, yeah. where the building collapsed, yeah. because it had been made so poorly, and thousands of, over a thousand people were killed. That's what you get with free trade. Fair trade is where people are honored for their ability to be able to make quality products and where they get to actually make enough money to support their families and even have enough left over to benefit their community. I know several years ago, one of our previous fair, fair trade store managers went on a tour with one of the fair trade organizations that certifies fair trade all around the world, went to a village of a place that, of goods that we'd carried in the store and the people there were saying, this is so wonderful because now we actually have a school. We can send our kids to school. We're getting paid enough that they don't have to work. They can go to school. I mean, it changes lives yeah. when you buy fair trade and you know that what you're buying is supporting the people who are involved in making it. It's just, it's just critical. And, and the, Jeanette Rankin opened that store years and years, years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm betting that there is a lot more information about fair, the concept of fair trade and um, the process involved in, in uh, um, ascertaining it uh, at the Peace Center. There is, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there are several organizations that are worldwide organizations that specialize in certifying and being in touch with the folks who produce the products to be sure that they're getting the fairness mm -hmm. that they need. Right. And then making sure that those of us who try to be the last chain, last link in the chain, which is of course selling the product because that's what the whole thing relies on, people being able to sell their products, um, all of that is minimized in terms of middlemen so that they get paid really directly and it's, it's, yeah. it's a really good system. And um, I just want to make sure that the viewers got a nice overview of Jeanette Rankin yeah. Peace Resource Center. That there is a fair trade store in the front. Yes. There's a library, a free lending library um, on the subject of peace diplomacy, and also a mediation room yes. in the back that people could use. Yes, and we actually have uh, classes on nonviolent communication that are offered every two weeks. People want to come and just all you have to do is show up. There's no cost. It's just a something that we have going on. Oh, that's Is great. that at a set time every two it weeks? It is. It's on Wednesday noons. Wednesday at, Wednesdays at noon, yeah. every other Wednesday. Every other, no, every other Wednesday. And you know that one of the best <coughs> parts about the Peace Center, if you're interested in 
keeping your finger on the pulse of what's happening with peace and social justice issues in Missoula and the surrounding area is that we have a e-newsletter, an electronic newsletter that goes out every Thursday, which has announcements in it mm -hmm. of all of things that are going on. And all you have to do is just let us know what your email address is and your name and we'll put you on our email list. And then every Thursday in your mailbox, your email box, you will have this wonderful set of information about all of what's going on. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Now you mentioned that um, whether uh, one might want to nominate an adult peacemaker or a youth peacemaker, that there were some questions involved on the website. Do you yeah. have those somewhere? Yeah, Just an example? Of course. Um, there's a few specific questions we ask. What characteristics make this person or group a peacemaker? Um, any specific peace and justice efforts or activities that this person or group has participated in or led? Um, and, and in particular, also, we're all searching for peace, but how does this person or group inspire you, in particular, the nominator, and spread peace in the community? Nice. Good questions. Yeah. I know. I like to imagine now, like, fighting siblings, <laughs> taking a break, you know, and then one is nominating the other, partly in admiration for some of the concessions mm -hmm. and partly hoping it will make them a better person, <laughs> uh, that they'll have something they'll have to live up to. They'll be like, I'm taking back that peace award unless you, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Yeah. That, that sounds very doable as well, mm -hmm. does it That's, not? Yes, yeah. Nominating someone is not very hard. It's, it's a thoughtful thing, but it's not taxing in terms of what you right. have to do. Yeah. And, and then, it's a wonderful ceremony. You know, for yeah. years MCAT's recorded yeah. Well, we call it like the Peacemaker of the Year Award and, and something on that order. But I've always enjoyed seeing it, which keeps me at home, right? Because there's always something that comes up in the community. I'm like, well, I can just watch it at work. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen them for years now, and yeah. they're, uh, they're really touching. They really are. I'm thinking of Dan. I can't think of Dan's last name. Gallagher. Thank you. Dan Gallagher. Gallagher. Oh, yes. Remember, that was a great one, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. particular presentation and all of the context. You know, for, so for the people watching, Dan Gallagher for many years supported um, veterans in Missoula. He right. was a veteran of the Vietnam War and um, you know, he was very affected both by the war and by his homecoming trial once he got back in the 70s. And, um, there was a beautiful film made about the peace sign right. that was just north of MCAT Studios here. Um, and there was such a debate, right, among veterans. They wanted to see, the, they saw the peace sign as a kind of affront, a criticism, something very negative. And then among um, the progressive left, they saw the peace sign as this important symbol. And the movie that Gal made, I think she was in Minneapolis, was beautiful yes, we about. It. Oh, did yeah, you guys? Yeah. What a wonderful discussion and a really yeah. heartwarming where people that had different uh, backgrounds could talk respectfully, hear one another, etc. Well, et and one result of that was that Dan and Betsy uh, Mulligan, yeah. Craig, the director of the Peace Center, became very good friends. Very good friends. Yeah. Very good friends after starting out on kind of opposite sides. Right. So it was almost an embodiment of the principles non, yeah, non violent communication. Yes. They both listened to each other mm -hmm. and became very, very fond of each other. And then they went to high schools all over yeah. and talked about the, the whole process and experience. So that's just one example of what a peacemaker is all about and, um, and how important uh, fulfilling and modeling that sort of um, compassion and, and listening and understanding is in your community. Yeah. yeah. So again, the, the deadline for nominations is March, March 30th? End of the month. And then what, what's the timeline after that? Well, the celebration of an award of the Peacemaker of the Year, both the Adult and the Young Person Award, will be probably sometime in mid-May. Okay. So I'm thinking that it's probably going to be a Sometime in April, the committee will sit down and look at all the nominations and make their selection and let the person know. And but my, my guess is we're probably going to keep it, you know, so it'll be a big surprise. Right. You right. know, yeah, something maybe not at the celebration, but certainly maybe not any sooner than the same day, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Cool. So yeah, I, my guess is it's going to be a, a big deal. Well, so. That's pretty exciting. Although we will, um, that, that might not. We might not do it that way, I'm just thinking, because we want all the people's friends to be there. True. So we probably will do it a little sooner. 
Yeah. Probably right around the same time that we announced the adult. Okay. Of the year. Yeah. So, and also, um, I want to make sure people know they can visit Jeanette Rankin Peace Resource Center, um, the Fair Trade Store, and also the library, mm -hmm. and also I think people can book that room, you know, if they, they have some mediation issues and right. they need like a neutral place that's very supportive of them coming to a peaceful resolution. True. And I'll just mention that the Peace Center and the Fair Trade Store are both located in the same building at 519 South Higgins. And it says on the outside, it says the Olive Branch, yeah. which is the new name for the for the Fair Trade Store. And then, of course, the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. And when you walk in, it's clear that you're in the Fair Trade Store. It's not always as clear that you're in the Peace Center, but it, it's all yeah. in one place. <coughs> That's and, right. Yeah. And as we were saying earlier, the old Hanson's ice cream. Yes. Old for those who are very, very old, old. Missoula residents. <laughs> right. That would be us. That would be us. That would be us, yes. I was next door to Selma it forever. Selma doesn't remember, but the rest of us do. <laughs> yeah, because the Peace Center was on Front Street. Yeah. Way back when. Way yeah. back when. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I did a lot of shopping. Um, mm. at the Christmas time <laughs> at the Fair Trade Store. And the gifts went over really well. Oh, yes. <laughs> they were a success. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can't find something like that anywhere else. Right. Right? No. Yeah. Well, I guess we should wrap up the show. There's no reason right. not to. Scott agrees. He, he agrees. gives a thumbs up. But I want to thank you for taking the time, letting yes. people go before you. You and then know. taking the time to explain um, this this new facet of the annual search for peace. I can't peace. wait to learn who the Yeah, I'm going to be really curious to see. I'm waiting for the next Dalai Lama. They'll be like, <laughs> this is the person. Because there's seven and everybody loves them. Right. They'll be like, amazing. <laughs> uh, so uh, we will be back uh, two weeks hence. It, yes. And you're back from your trip. I'll be trip. tan. Yeah. Okay, so Kim will be back. <laughs> and her attitude will be much changed I'll for the positive. Curier, yes. She'll believe that spring will be but a heartbeat away I'm when next gonna, we yes, convene. Skip ahead. And um, as always, if, if you know of a group or um, a, a nonprofit you'd like to see on the show, yeah. um, just let us know and, and um, we'll make arrangements. We're going to go till um, May, right, right, before we yeah. take. We're in season five or six. We're not sure, uh, but we're but uh, new voices on the program, new organizations yes. represented. We're we're very much open to it. So in in that effect, if if you want to communicate with us, you can email mcat at mcat.org or call us at five four two six two two eight. So for mcat, I'm Joel Baird, and I'm Kim Anderson. And we'll see you next time. Your local library, igniting the passion for reading. How would you like to have an endless supply of books, movies, music, audiobooks, and even ebooks whenever you want? Your library card can do all that and it doesn't cost a thing. You can pick up a library card anytime the library is open, free of charge to residents. All you need is a picture ID with your current address. The library will then verify your address, and once they have, your library card will be good for life. Library Hello everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. I'm here with a special In Between the Program program to invite you to an interesting, exciting opportunity to have public input to shape the future of local communication in Missoula. We want people to participate in our focus group to get your reaction to uh, public access television, how government meetings are covered, what we can do to help educators, and more. So this is all coming up in the spring. It'll be beautiful then, and you'll want to leave your house. You <laughs> want to leave maybe on April 3rd or April 4th. It's a Tuesday. It's a Wednesday. We'll have some evening focus group sessions, and you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you help participate in a very important study and community needs assessment that will shape the future of communications in Missoula for at least a decade to come. With me in the studio to help explain the process and, and someone who has been helping MCAP put together this process is Sue Buskey. Sue, welcome and thanks for being on the show. I am thrilled to be here and I've, I've just spent my first trip here to Missoula and I'm really enjoying it and looking forward to being back to do more and more work on behalf of MCAT and the city of Missoula, which is so great because MCAT and the city are so act collaborating on this in really important process. Yeah, thanks so much for doing it. Um, you viewer, you may not know that Sue has had over 30 years of experience doing this type of community needs assessment that helps cities, counties, towns put together a vision plan for communication 
in Missoula. In this instance, and some of you know that MCAS started in 1990. That was 28 years ago. We sometimes get fixed in our ways. We can't help it. We, you know, Sue has noticed this on her visit. <laughs> We're like, why do you do that weird thing? We're like, well, when we first came here, everyone put bubble gum right here on this corner of the table, so we do too, by way of metaphor. Mm -hmm. So that this community needs assessment, which desperately relies on public participation, mm -hmm. right, to really work. Mm -hmm. It is going to help stodgy organizations like Old MCAT reevaluate how do we deliver our service? What directions can we go in that we never thought of before, right? It, that's exactly true. And uh, the thing we have to understand is that the f contract between Charter Cable and the city is what dictates channels that are available for the community to use, like MCAT's channels, funding that's available, your ability to go live from various locations. Well, that contract was negotiated in 2003. Now, just think about how much how we view and use media has changed since 2003. So what we try to do with the needs assessment process is to engage residents, people who are active with their school, their church, their community group, their neighborhood association, and help them to think about what are the ways that they would like to more effectively communicate with their constituents, uh, get information to them, get information from them, and what would make it easier for them to do so. And so part of our sort of visioning process, which is really what the needs assessment is, it's a community communications visioning process, is to get all kinds of folks in the community together and to get them to think about, what do I want to do for the future? What are the big issues we need to communicate more effectively to the public? And how can, and what are the tools we need to do that? And that's part of the information that's gathered and then the city takes to its negotiations with Charter to update that 2003 contract. Yes, there's a lot of water under that bridge. <laughs> Some of it not too clean. <laughs> so um, another thing we would like people to know, right, is that they don't have to be any TV expert. Right. They don't have to have used MCAT or, or right. any kind mm -hmm. of camera stuff before. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for them to put on a thinking cap or, or an imagination. Mm -hmm. So that if someone came to the focus group and said, well, you know, I'm leading a local group of Cub Scouts and the kids are really interested in media so I thought I'd come down. We're not going to say, well, that's hardly qualification and show them the door. Right. We're going to welcome them mm -hmm. and let them have some input and voice into the process. Exactly. I mean, in fact, it's really important that we have all kinds of people participate. I mean, you know, if you think about it for a moment, every one of us have to communicate with many people at many levels every day. Okay, right. and and we really don't think about it until we, we until it comes hard, till something gets in the way of that ability to get that information to the person or the group or whoever, and also the other thing that's really important is that in today's world there is more less and less information that's purely local and more and more information that's totally global. So it's harder to get things about information about what's happening in your community. So what the community access channels are about and what the community media center that MCAT operates is about is that truly local information distribution and what it's going to take to make it easier and, 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 and more accessible to the public. Right, and that's where we need the public because right. we can't figure it all out. Right. We're just one organization. So the public opportunity is coming up this spring for people to attend one of four focus groups mm -hmm. at the Missoula Public Library. The meetings will be held in the large meeting room. It's located at 301 East Main, really close to the downtown. There's parking outside, and there's door prizes and other incentives for people to attend. They um, can register, right, um, right, on the MCAT website, right. and I put up a focus group tab, mm -hmm. and also in the splash page mm -hmm. will indicate to people well, mm -hmm. this is how you can register for the group. In addition to that, there are also going to be an online survey that will start exactly. right around the close of the focus groups. Mm -hmm. And the online survey, I mean, in, in order to get the broadest diversity of information, we are doing focus groups and this online survey. The online survey will open on April 3rd and will stay open till May 30th. And it'll be, a, and, and the online survey will deal with community information and community programming. It'll also deal with customer service. 
Yeah. We'll want to find out if you're happy with, if you're a subscriber to Charter, if you're happy with it. If you've never subscribed, why you've not subscribed. We need to get that information because that becomes very pertinent to what the city will then go to Charter and attempt to negotiate for in this negotiation process, which is what the renewal process is about. Right, and it lasts so long. That's partly why we want this public input and we want to get it right. Mm -hmm. This one is likely to be a 10-year mm -hmm. uh, agreement, and it is kind of scary when you say the numbers, right? Yeah. That's the year 2028 20, it would last. Right. Next, and next I think right. yesterday when we had a meeting of, uh, at the library, kind of kickoff meeting, he said, well, just imagine it's a 15 year like the previous two, mm -hmm. it would be the year 2033. Yeah, so and, we and really do yeah, need people you, to help we, us we on really this. We really need people. Do it yeah. all. We need the public input. It becomes really critical to, 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 to really visioning where we want to go in this community. And it can't just be you and I or somebody down right. at City Hall. It's got to be everybody in the community. It's got to be people who, who come from different walks of life and different income areas and different education areas and different ethnicities, whatever. The more input, the better. Sue, thanks for taking the time to help me explain this. And for you, dear viewer, I want to extend a most cordial and welcoming invitation to participate in a focus group. It would be April 3rd and 4th at the Missoula Public Library. You can go to MCAT.org and get the details and if you want to call me and talk to me, Joel Baird at MCAT, my number here is 542-6228. I can explain more about what you would do when you're in there. There'll be relatively just right groups, not so small that you feel like you're giving something away, nor too big that your voice is going to get lost. We'll have about hopefully 20 to 30 people at each one of these focus groups on April 3rd and 4th. There'll be one evening focus group and three focus groups at different times during the day. So if you feel like you have two hours you can spare, if you feel lucky and you're going to win a door prize, consider being part of the focus group. Once again, if you want to learn more about it, call me at MCAT. The number is 542-6228. So for MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for your attention during this brief inter-program program about the upcoming need for your public input. We'll see you soon. Everyone, I'm Joel Baird, General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. We're here at a carousel for Missoula, and we're here with Jess Coulter, Director of Operations. Jess, thanks so much for taking the time. Absolutely, thanks for visiting. Oh, it's great to be here. This is such a wonderful fixture in Missoula. Could you tell people a little bit about its history?